I shot a gun at nine years old. In the meat of the loud guns, you cannot hear your gun, and that sometimes can be terrifying. So you'll come to your conscious by seeing your gun shaking. That's when you know it's actually working. Emmanuel Jao was a child soldier during the brutal Sudanese civil war in the 1990s, where government forces in the predominantly Muslim north fought rebels in the south. Taken from his home, he was beaten, brainwashed, and trained by the rebels to fight. After four years of fighting, he managed an epic escape to create a new life. I believe I've survived for a reason to tell my story to touch lives. Mr. Jow was sent to train to be a soldier at the age of eight by his father, who was the rebels' chief of police. The training was brutal. We were welcomed with a beating. The violence that was given to us, I can't even describe it. And I look at it as a psychological way to break into us so they can mold us to what they want. He survived the training and was given a gun, ready for revenge. That war took the soul of my village and my aunties died during that war. All my uncles died during that war. My mother was claimed by that war. As a kid, I wanted two things, to get a bike. I wanted to get a bicycle and also to kill as many Arabs and Muslims as possible. Mr. Jow and the other boys had been groomed to feel a sense of camaraderie, to fight for each other. At first, the violence was exciting. The beat of the AK-47 itself is so empowering. Violence is fun. There's an excitement. When they give you a gun into your hand, you're excited. Memories from childhood can be hazy and some have disputed Mr. Jow's claims. But he says after four years of fighting, he escaped the rebel commanders. In the dead of night, he and 400 other child soldiers fled. If they were recaptured, they would have almost certainly been killed. The boys trekked for three months across the country, facing starvation. I call this the lowest point I've ever been because we drank our own urine, other soldiers, started eating dead bodies. One of the escapees managed to reach a village and raise the alarm. Mr. Jow says only 16 of the 400 boys survived. We got rescued and I met a British aid worker called Emma McCune. And she's the one that smuggled me through a plane into Kenya. And that became the turning point of my life where I was able to go to school. Mrs. McCune was married to Mr. Jow's uncle, the rebel leader, Riak Masha. She died in a car crash shortly afterwards. So Mr. Jow had to make his own way as a teenager in the Kenyan slums. But something saved him. As a way of dealing with the trauma he had experienced, he started rapping and discovered hip hop. I got into music because I found music was the place I was able to become a child again. In 2004, his debut album was a hit in Kenya. The single appeared on a UK charity album and he played at Nelson Mandela's 90th birthday concert. In the last decade, Mr. Jow has traveled the world, performing and sharing his experiences through his music. With the likes of Alicia Keys and Nelly Furtado. We want peace. Big love to Emmanuel Jow. He uses his music to be a political activist and peace advocate. The challenges that I've been through, I accepted them. I accepted my childhood experience. Every person who has become successful has gone through fire. Mr. Jow is one of the lucky ones. According to the UN, 
Tens of thousands of children have been recruited as child soldiers across 20 countries this year alone. Children place should be school. Children should be taught to love, should be taught to explore their imagination, not to be trained to kill people, not to be exposed to violence. 